Science on the Brain with Marshall Brain. Hello and welcome. I'm Marshall Brain and today we're going to talk about measuring things. Yes, measuring things. The reason why we're going to talk about measuring things is because scientists measure things all the time. They're constantly measuring things. And here's a whole bunch of stuff that scientists might use to measure things. For example, a scientist might use a thermometer to measure temperature. A scientist could use a voltmeter to measure electricity. A scientist could use a tape measure or a ruler to measure distance. They can use stopwatches to measure time. There's scales to measure weight. Scientists have thousands of devices for measuring things and they use them constantly to gather data. So let's say that we want to act like scientists and measure some stuff. The question becomes, what can we measure? And I've got an idea. What we're going to measure today is ourselves. That's right. We can measure all kinds of things about ourselves and record them on a sheet of paper. Some of these are really obvious, like height and weight. You stand against the wall and measure how tall you are. You stand on a scale and measure how much you weigh. But some of these things are not that easy. And it shows you what scientists sometimes have to do. They have to sit and figure out how to measure things. So for example, look at this one. Jumping height. How could you figure out how high you can jump? Or the volume of your lungs. How would you figure out how much air your lungs can hold? Or your reaction time. How could you find out what your reaction time is? But we just want to know if you take the deepest breath possible, how much air can you hold in your lungs? And one way to find that out is to use a balloon. So here's what you do. You take a really deep breath. And then you blow. Now, if you tie the balloon off and then use a string to measure the circumference of that balloon, you can find out how much air your lungs hold. You just take the string, wrap it around the balloon, and measure how long the string is. So when I blew up the balloon, it was about 23 inches in circumference. I can convert that circumference into a radius, and I can convert that radius into the volume of my lungs. What about reaction time? Reaction time is the amount of time it takes for your brain to react to something and move a part of your body. It's really important if you're a sports star or a race car driver or a fighter pilot. One easy way to measure reaction time is to use a normal yardstick or meter stick. And what you do is you have somebody hold the stick and then you put your fingers down here at the bottom of the stick. And then you have that person drop it. And when they drop it, your job is to try to catch it as quickly as possible. Once you catch the ruler, see how far it fell. You can plug that number into an equation and it will tell you what your reaction time is in seconds. Try it three or four times and take an average. What about something like jump height? You just take a normal piece of tape like this roll it into a circle, and then put it on the tip of your fingers. Then all you do is stand next to a nice big wall, jump as high as you can, and pop the tape onto the wall at your highest point. Uh. Then just measure from the tape to the floor with a tape measure. If you get creative, there's all kinds of stuff you can measure about yourself. For example, how long can you hold your breath? Just measure it. How long can you hold your arms out? Measure that. How long can you jump on one foot? There's all kinds of things you can measure about yourself. Record them on a sheet of paper, and then a year from now, do it again and see how much you've improved. Have fun performing your own science experiments. Science on the Brain with Marshall Brain.